We continue our discussion on the voter photo ID constitutional amendment with a member who opposes that amendment. Senator Katie Sieben joins me now to talk a little bit about why you think that Minnesotans should vote no on this. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on. You bet. So, Senator, let's begin with, you know, you've made some compelling arguments in committee last session on why you oppose voter photo ID. So explain why you think Minnesotans should just say no. I think the main issue is that there's too much ambiguity in the proposed constitutional amendment. We're not sure exactly what the implications will be. For instance, will students be able to use a photo ID from their college along with a electric bill, for instance, that has their address on it to um, prove their residency to be able to vote? We don't know. The constitutional amendment, um, if it passes, will um, be set up for the legislature to determine, to determine whether or not um, that issue, whether students can vote using their college IDs as they can now, um, will still be in effect. Um, another example is, will um, senior citizens in nursing homes be able to um, use some of the same procedures now to be able to vote um, if the photo ID amendment passes. It's very unlikely they won't. For instance, right now, um, many senior homes, um, the, uh, the caretakers can vouch for residents of a nursing home. That will no longer be able to occur. So there's just a lot of potential that the amendment, if it passes, will um, will not allow Minnesotans who have the right to vote to be able to vote. Let's talk a little bit about the language that will be on the ballot. The state Supreme Court recently ruled that that language and the title of voter ID can be provided by the legislature. Now, Justice Alan Page wrote in his dissent that I would conclude that the ballot question on the voting amendment proposed by the legislature is materially and fundamentally deceptive and misleading. Would you agree with this? I would agree with that. If you look at the actual question that's put before voters, it's substantially different, or it's different, I should say, than the um, enacting language that, if it's passed, will be written into the Constitution. So one big problem with it is that it says that um, no one's sure what substantially equivalent um, voting uh, mechanisms will, what that actually means. So there's ambiguity between the question before um, voters and the actual language that will be instituted. And so do you think then, would you support a measure that states the language that the legislature passes needs to be the language on the ballot, that they need to be one and the same? The problem is, is that with election law, um, and this is, I think, to the heart of the issue of why this should not be going in the state constitution, this is something we could do legislatively. The legislature should work and could work in a bipartisan way to pass election reform that will um, take care of some of the problems that have been raised in recent years. Um, we have a proven track record of doing that back a couple years ago. Um, the legislature should do that, pass it um, legislatively, legislatively and have Governor Dayton sign it so that we're not putting things into the Constitution or language into our state Constitution that could be, um, that will be uh, not relevant in decades to come, perhaps. An argument that's been made consistently throughout this debate has been that voter photo ID disenfranchises certain segments of the population. This argument was actually countered on our program last week by Representative Mary Kiffmeyer. She stated that by offering free IDs to those who typically couldn't afford or have access to one, we're actually enfranchising those segments of the population. Would you agree with this? No, I mean, that doesn't make sense because, for instance, there was in the Star Tribune this weekend, there was an article about a woman who was born in Mississippi on a farm, and all she has is f after trying to track down a birth certificate, I think to go on a cruise or something, um, all she could get was her cert was a some type of certificate of birth that showed she was born along with her brothers and sisters and the date. There's no she can't get. There is no birth certificate that she has. So um, under the proposed constitutional amendment, this woman who has been voting for decades has the right to vote in Minnesota. Everyone who knows or acknowledges that um, she's a citizen, she's a resident of Minnesota and meets all the requirements, she wouldn't be able to get a photo, a photo ID. Um, and 
therefore would be disenfranchised. If this passes, how much responsibility would you say the state has in ensuring that those who might have a difficult time obtaining an ID, like a college student or an elderly person, can get one with relative ease? So how much of the onus is on the state? I think a, a tremendous onus is on the state. For instance, if college students, um, think of a college student, how perhaps they move every semester or every year to a new address, that means that the state of Minnesota taxpayers are going to be on the hook for ensuring that those students can get a valid ID every time they move. Or for instance, if a senior moves to a different nursing um, home center and doesn't have the means to either get to the, um, uh, the DMV or have the means to pay for a new um, photo identification, that onus, I think, the burden will have to be on the state um, to get them uh, the documents so that they can vote. And we're just about out of time, but is this, does this seem like an overwhelming task, in your opinion, to try to get IDs to everybody? I think one point, one final point that I want to make is that when I touched on earlier that we did see some um, voting problems in Minnesota, primarily what they were, if the um, viewers recall, was it was a case of felons who erroneously voted or um, who should not have voted. Photo ID won't solve that. Because when you show your ID, it doesn't say on your driver's license whether or not you're a felon. So I'm not a felon, but if I was, um, I could still show my ID and, and vote um, you know, if I wasn't supposed to, because the photo ID won't stop the felon from voting. So there are things that we should do as a legislature. It's incumbent on us as legislators to work on solutions in a bipartisan way to address the real issues at hand. Photo ID doesn't solve those those real problems. Okay, Senator Katie Steven, we are out of time. Thank you for your perspective on the issue. We appreciate it. Thank you.